Okay. Hello. Oh. You there? Hello. Uh, it's nice to see Dale back. Yeah. Thanks for filling in, Mark, last week or two weeks ago. Uh, no problem. No problem. Ooh, lighting, special effects. <laughs> oh, hilarious. I was just about to send you a picture. I don't okay. know you now. Look, thank you, big garbage. It's my seven one back. Jamila, 115 is the start time? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. I just no want to make ones. sure we didn't have anything ahead of that. Well, if you're at the last meeting, you would have known that. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> you're hilarious, Mark. <laughs> you, must, you must have did such a good job. You had nothing that was tabled that came back. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was Mel. some real nasty ones, though. You missed some good ones. <laughs> Mel Switzer made it all right. Melvin was responsible for the efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> We're changing done something, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, since I have 10 minutes, I'm going to go for a coffee. Is Sir Waddick here today? Do you know? No. Um, no. So far, he hasn't joined the meeting, but he hasn't let me know if he wasn't able to attend. So I'm assuming. Do you think he's back be? out east? You know? No, I don't know. I haven't heard. Okay, I've got ten minutes. <laughs> Thomas just joined. It's kind of like watching a slow-mo movie, isn't it? Watch people join <laughs> one by one. <laughs>
Uh, Jamila, they started uh, talking about opening City Hall. I thought I heard something on the news today. Um, I believe they're working on policies. Um, I don't think anything has like fully reopened yet. Um, there are certain uh, sections that have um, like one person is available on the first floor, but not the full city hall hasn't reopened yet. I think they're just working on policies for how it's going to happen. I bet it's not till 2022. <laughs> no, I just feel like that's what's going to take. It's going to take a while because we're still in a wave, right? But you still go in and well, use the washer after the sixth wave. Yeah. I'm going to be getting seasick if these waves keep coming. Day 22 is Thanks, Nancy. <laughs> what did I do? A copy. I charged it to you. <laughs> it's actually T. Try T. Oh, well, I do too, but this has to be copy. I was going to get granddad's donuts for everybody today, but I didn't know how to get the screen. Hey, hold that up. <laughs> I passed by there today. There was no lineup. This is what you could have given you cupcakes too. Cupcakes? Yeah. Look at them. What? Were you making? <laughs> Were you baking? <laughs> the burn doesn't bake. <laughs> Somebody else has to. They were left left over from Bimberg Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Three years ago. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah? Did you have Excellent. your hot dog? Did you have your hot dog cart there, or your French fry cart there, I mean? Well, they didn't do as well on that as we did on some of the other things, but... Um, okay. Our crown and anchor did better this year than it did in the last four years. We didn't have it last year, but two years prior to that. The midway is probably the best midway I've ever seen up there. No way. How did I miss oh, yeah. it? Was it this past weekend? Yes, yep. it was. Okay, that's why I had a baseball tournament. And the uh, demolition derby was packed. And but it wasn't raining. On, uh, that's right. They had a rodeo on uh, Saturday at noon and another one at six. They were both very well attended. Awesome. Again, the midway was packed. And one boy got hurt at the uh, noon rodeo. He got gored by a bull. And uh, Sunday was an animal demonstration, and that went over very well, too. So. Oh, it sounds like a great success. Uh, it, it was a pretty good fair. Um, I heard the fair made some money at it and rode it to Lions Club, and, and I'm sure Campbell's did because the, uh, there was no such a thing as social distancing. <laughs> it all went out the window. Well, what are you gonna do?
you. They were lucky because they're before the 22nd, so the new rules come down. It's a different story. Well, I showed my passport and my ID this morning, and all was well. Wherever I was, I really don't That's think. That, yeah. I don't think they read it very carefully, because I mean, you just flash your phone in front of their face, and these these poor kids are probably not trained. I think about um, the the four... this morning, and they didn't ask me for anything. Oh, you're I've kidding. Been, I've been to a lot of uh, football games and soccer games, and for a couple of weeks, they've been asking for the passports, and they've actually been reading them. You hold up yeah, your my... your passport, your your, your um, vaccination, and then your uh, driver's license, and they read them both together. But would they recognize fraud if they saw it? I don't know. <laughs> um, Good question, right? Yeah. I just heard I someone to say, someone told me today that it would be really easy to just white out the name, take a picture of it with the new name put in there and you'd be good to go. And I'm like, I don't, I don't even want to know that you would do that, you know? I um, I know my two you know, grandsons are playing hockey and they had to get into a practice arena last night, both of them, and they had to, to uh, my daughter had to give both identification and show their sign to get in. Yeah. Oh, well, we, you had do what you do. we had a situation at the Glenbrook Arena last night where we've had players, every player that plays for the OHA has to have a double vaccine. Otherwise, have, they, don't have they lifted get to the restrictions in the, the restaurants, like the six foot separation yeah. and all that? Like Go ahead. We had boys last night that have been out for six practices, one and a half hour practices, and they were turned away by the woman inside asking for vaccine slips and so on and so forth. And because two of them didn't have their driver's licenses with them, they rode with oh. other people. They couldn't get in unless they could show a driver's license to match the vaccines. Oh boy. Okay, uh, Jamila, ready to go? Yep. Okay, so start time is 1.15. Uh, we'll start with roll call, uh, Tom. Here. Bob. Here. Mark. He's still getting his coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was here. I saw him come back in the room, but he must have left Okay. Uh, Mal. Here. Laverne. Here. Nancy. I'm here. Margaret. Here. And myself. And Dave. Not yet. Okay. Uh, no, I haven't seen him yet. And okay. uh, Mark is when he, back in the room now. Okay. Um, any members have a conflict with any applications today? No. Seeing none. Um, we'll have a short, if we need be, we'll have a short meeting afterwards if there's any issues. And I um, guess we're ready to call the first application. All right. So we are hearing HMA 21316 for 183 Rothsay Avenue in Hamilton. We have the agent registered to speak and one interested party. Okay, is the agent available? Hi there, Christian Hollingshead. Yes, did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Uh, I did. Okay, do you have any questions? Uh, no. And there's one concerned party. Yep. So we had uh, Michael Rinaldi registered, and I uh, see him on the call. So you'll just need to unmute yourself, um, and then you can. Hello. Speak. Hi there. Yes. Did you have some questions on this application? Uh, no. No questions. I'm just here in support. Oh, cool. Okay. Can right, have any it. questions? Motion okay. for move approval. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Nancy, so then Mark. Yep. All in favor? Opposed, if any? Seeing none. And just for clarification, that was uh, as amended for building? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Did I see Dylan put his hand up? <laughs> Were you voting in favor, Dylan? <laughs> <laughs> None opposed. 
Motion carried, uh, application approved. Thank you. Oh, and it looks like we had an item withdrawn before the agenda was posted. Um, okay. So our next item isn't until 125. So which is one Dylan got... Hudecki still on the line there? Yep. Is he related to Dr. Hudecki at all? Yes, I am. Yeah, he was my grandpa. Yeah, the MP and the uh, yeah. Yeah. Of the big surgeon. Yeah. Yeah, my wife's family lived next door to his for a long period back in the 60s, uh, right next door on Markland Street. Right. Yeah, they would be. Uh, that was on Caroline and Markland. Yeah, fantastic. That's right. And then my uh, wife's parents, when she was a little girl, lived on the house that backed onto theirs, the second house in. And then there was a coach house oh. there too. Yeah. Yep. My my friends lived in the coach house. Oh wow! Wow. wow. What's the last name for that? A Fazari. Fazari. Okay. Fazari. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And uh, Doctor Decky and my dad were. Uh, buddies too because we're polish background way back when as well yeah yeah it's a quite a i think your dad and dr hideki and i played tennis together and he's one of the few guys i could beat at tennis yeah <laughs> that would be him yeah he wasn't the, <laughs> he wasn't the most agile fella but uh he was a good community member and uh they had nine kids so sure well, my my dad is bernie hideki and uh, he was a teacher in the separate school system for about 35 yeah. years and now i'm a teacher wow. so yeah very cool cool well thanks everybody that was really nice of you and uh have a great day i guess i'll let you guys get back to it <laughs> all right down the road twos so which one was withdrawn uh jamila so i don't think it ever made it on to the agenda it was withdrawn so we do have a draft okay. agenda before we send it out so it was just withdrawn before okay so 719 is still one. our application 2323 is still the next one yes yeah okay thank you it's just at 125 instead of 120. okay <laughs>
I know is available. Nobody. Won't bury. Which is the wrong way to go, too. And we are all set to go whenever you are, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I think you're just muted. I'll just unmute you or send the request. Okay. Okay. So we're hearing HMA 21323 for 719 Barton Street East. We have the agent registered to speak and no interested parties. Okay. Is the agent available? Yes. And did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Yes. And do you have any questions? No. Committee, any questions? Motion? Move it. Second it. Mel, then Laverne. All in favor? Here, here. Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion carried, application approved. Thank you. There's all kinds of patios in the city of Hamilton that have no parking. 
Turn your mic on. Burger at the restaurants associated with. I'm having trouble finding that ammo. Hey Dave, how you doing? Good, thank you. Hey David, in the East Coast? No, I'm at home. <laughs> I leave next week. Yeah. I just wondered which home, Dave. Pardon? He's, he's saying the I home just, for tax purposes. Yeah. I just <laughs> wondered which home you're yeah. in. Yeah. So where do you vote? Do you vote here or do you vote the East Coast? Here. Both. <laughs> here. Crazy election. Once again, what a waste of time. What a waste of money. I just want to speak my my feelings, and I'm sure all of you feel the same way. Complete yep. waste of $600 million. I mean... Dave, this is not the right. place. So we are all set for the next item. <laughs> uh, if you're ready, Mr. Chair. Yep. So we are yes. hearing HMA 21304 for 175 Young Street in Hamilton. We have the agent registered to speak and the owner and one interested party. Okay, is the agent available? Just have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. Did uh, you have a chance to re read the comments that were posted? Uh, yes, we have. Okay, and I'm sure you have some questions. Uh, yes, we have some uh, questions and a comment. So okay. this variance application is for the patio to be in the rear, uh, to the rear of the building, which is the west side, and that abuts a residential uh, property. Uh, that's the only property that's abutting that's residential. And this has been running for the last two seasons under the temporary patio uh, program and been running successfully. Uh, there's been no complaints as confirmed by bylaw and an email was sent to that effect. And also this is being supported by Jason Farr as per his February 2021 uh, letter. So uh, the nature of this relief is uh, established because uh, of the use, uh, because it's being used right now with no issues. And this is being done as a alternate to the original east side location, which was on the corner of the, near the corner of the property. Uh, which would only require an encroachment agreement and no variance at all. So this is this application to put it on the west side at the, at the back of the parking lot is to uh, accommodate um, the issues that were brought up on the original east side location application. And that application is still open and ongoing uh, on the east side. Okay, thank you. There was uh, one concerned uh, citizen or neighbor? Uh, yes, sorry. Um, I did take a look and um, it does not appear that Kenny Prasad is uh, in the meeting at the moment. Okay. Um, and Mr. Uh, Chair, I did just want to uh, make note that there was an updated letter from Councillor Farr that I believe was circulated to the committee members yeah. um, in support yes. of the application again. Right. There's, there's no letter from the concerned uh, person. Because they do not support the variance? Want to deny it? Pardon? Sorry? Uh, Is there somebody no. from the city there because they're, they're uh, saying they do not want to support it and they want it to be denied? So I just want to hear from them where they've changed their, their feelings on it. Uh, through the chair of the committee, staff's recommendation means, remains the same. I don't know if there's an additional question there, but staff's comments are the same. It, was there a letter from the concerned person? <laughs> I do not believe so. And what are the hours of operation of the patio? Uh, um, 
willing to work with my I've showed that um, sorry we can't hear you you'll sorry, need to speak closer to the microphone can you hear me now yeah yeah yes. okay so uh, I'm willing to work with the um, committee on this one I uh, I haven't had any issues uh, so with respects to the hours um, um, provided I could have some discretion on that because uh, if someone does show up uh, uh, in the restaurant and uh, has like five minutes to a stated hour um, I'd like to at least accommodate that person until they're done and then have them move on I hope that answers the question uh, not, not not quite what what what, what, what time do you close um, I close anywhere from 10 till 1 or 2 in the morning. And the patio the same? I could basically do that the same or earlier. David, you have a question? Yeah, okay. So the patio will be located on what, what whereabouts on the property on if north, south, east, if you can give me that. That's my first question. Back in sure. the parking lot. Sure, so if, if I can answer this. It's basically on the west side of the property. So there's a parking lot currently there. So the west yeah. side is abutting the property. I Resident. think it's 163, who's in full support. Yeah. Uh, she's the tenant and the owner's in full support. Um, and again, just to, there's been a history with this, uh, with this, uh, with this patio uh, process. Um, so the reason I'm putting it there uh, is to appease everybody. I just really want to make everybody happy. This is my way of compromising with the community. Um, again, I, I could have it on the east side, which is sheltering uh, the building would now shelter the abutting property. However, this is just my way to make all the uh, neighbors happy. Did right. I answer the question? It, it did answer the question. Um, so do you have any plans for music out on the patio? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I can always hope, but I don't because I'm not in the BIA. So as the city evolves and hopefully they will allow me as the community warms up to it, hopefully they will allow me as well. Um, we've had conversation, um, acoustic, acoustic music. Um, I, I would like to do that. Um, but again, as the community allows me to do that, I'm, I'm good or as the city as a whole allows me to do that. Okay. Nancy? Thank you. I go back to 2015 when the application came to us to use this property as a patio on the east side, which is actually on city um, allowance there. And uh, we heard from a couple of neighbors at that time and I believe it was uh, approved with conditions, but then taken to LPAT, which is now LPAT instead of OMB, and the city uh, appealed our decision. Um, I went down there again this morning and I've seen this happening over the COVID period where the patio has been operational. It looks like it's taken down now because all that's left are the, um, whatever those things are called, the pylons that hold the, the deck up. Um, if the neighbors in the back don't have any complaints and the neighbor on the west side doesn't have any complaints, then I want this thing to go through. I, I understand Jason Farr is also in support because we have raped these people of their business over the last year and a half. We not necessarily, but COVID has, and they're trying to compromise to make this agreeable. Now, if there's a sound barrier that's required at the back of the patio that abuts the neighbor on Augusta, then I don't see that as a problem. Uh, as for the parking, which was a second variance being reduced from whatever number it was to whatever number it was to allow for this patio, um, so what? This is, this is a, a local establishment that most people are walkable. Most people are coming in from the apartment buildings or from the neighbor. We watched Captain Fiddle down the street shut its doors this past uh, couple of weeks. They had no parking. They had residents on either side and behind. They also had the patio on the city allowance. So why this one is such a difficult one for the staff, I, I just don't understand. So if I hear from anybody else or anyone else can 
take another note on this. Um, I'm ready to make a motion for approval. And I'm ready to second it personally. David? Oh. Yeah, I've got a question. Um, do you want to do anything about music to a certain time, Nancy? Uh, yeah, I think we did that once before, if I'm not mistaken, Jim. I think we had something uh, that 11 o'clock had to be in the shutdown for the music. And the neighbor was quite okay with that last time. Um, I mean, unfortunately, the neighbor's not here, but if, would you be willing to look at it with a, a, an acoustic limitation to 11 o'clock and then worry about it as things open up down the road? That's to Jim. The other question, Nancy, would be a, a time frame for the outdoor patio. Do you let it run till one or um, two? Uh, yeah. So I want to be clear on this. If if we let it run to eleven o'clock, and I have a like, all of us have gone to a restaurant. Yeah. So the problem that I have is is that when someone shows up at quarter to eleven, do I shush them off the patio? No, no. We're talking about the music. We're talking about the music, not There's the no, patrons. Okay. Sorry, sorry. So my issue there. Sorry to um, answer that, I don't have any music on the patio. Um, the music indoors, I go till 2 a.m. Okay, I'm that's fine. So, so that so goes patio to till 11 o'clock, no problem. No, I, I think the patio should be a little bit longer than 11 o'clock, honestly. I mean, you can't shoosh people out at quarter to 11 when most people just get up and start going to patios at 10, 11 o'clock nowadays, except for some of these committee members, I get it. But, um, Besides that, I think we should have a little bit length longer. To be honest with you, a patio in that area is more enjoyable. And I, I, my concern is the music earlier and the patio later. So you got Hess Village that are going till 1 a.m. So I don't have a problem with the patio staying open till 1 a.m. Or, or however, I think that's a fair number. Just the music till 11 o'clock, if any. Yeah, they want music yeah. out on the patio, right? If they got, you know, Bon Jovi out there, you know, maybe we should, you know, cut that back to about 11. And if I could just add before before you decide is uh, over the last two years, um, if I could extend some, um, uh, I guess, some reward is I've been able to manage it successfully with no complaints at all over the last two years. So I think that shows that I'm capable of doing that. So that's why I, I'd like some discretion in that. Um, yeah. And we also had a question from Margaret and then Laverne. Yes, um, it seemed to me that the application did not include um, music on the patio and music um, and entertainment on the patio is specifically not approved. Um, I was thinking that I would be a little lenient the patio despite staff's comments, but I don't think I could be supportive of, of music at this time. I think that um, that uh, that might be a little bit much for the neighborhood. So I would be supporting uh, patio as proposed, but not music, even with limits on the music. Laverne? I believe I just heard from the applicant that he, he, he said that there was no music on the patio. He also made a comment that he has managed this patio for the last two years without a problem. The other thing to be noted here, he's not taking up any city allowance. He's using his own parking lot to put this patio in. And something else that's different today than what we dealt with a few years ago is that we have nobody, no concerned parties. So I really don't understand why the city is opposed to this. Yesterday, my wife and I went for dinner. We had to show our both vaccines and we had to show identification and they told us if we didn't have that with us we would have had to sit on a patio well if there is no patio where are these people going to go that don't have their vaccines so i'm in i'm in favor of supporting this thank you and i, I guess i would 
Oh, sorry. Camille, I would have one question to planning uh, as far as Margaret's comment with the music. Um, do they require a separate variance or any separate notica notification on the music side of it uh, for this? There is a note from building. There is a note from building in, in this saying that an outdoor commercial patio is not permitted to be used for commercial entertainment or commercial recreation, including live or recorded music or dance facilities. So with that in mind, their license wouldn't allow that anyway to the way I read it. Okay. So I make a motion to approve the patio, no restrictions, bylaws governed by other legislation, and that's my motion. You're gonna steal my motion again, Mark? Yes. <laughs> So I will second it. <laughs> That's funny. We can't see each other. That part. Part. Are you agreeing to that on that would not permit any commercial entertainment or, or uh, music? Yeah. Well, I don't even think we have to say it. It's not being asked for. We're not permitting it. Okay. And the bylaw doesn't allow it. So it doesn't really matter. Okay. Motion's on the table. Um, all in favor of the motion? Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion carried. Application approved. Good luck. Uh, I just want to say um, the last time I was here, uh, this committee um, was in favor of this. And I never said thank you the first time around. So I just want to say thank you uh, to all those that were in favor last and this time. Thank you. OK, good stuff. We'll see you there. <laughs> Tonight? <laughs> no, there's no patio there right now. <laughs> all right. And uh, we're all set for the next item, Mr. Chairman. If you're yes. ready, we're hearing HMA 21303 for 106 to 114 Bay Street North in Hamilton. We have the agents registered to speak, and we had one interested party as well. Okay, is the agent available? Yes, I'm here, thank you. Uh, have a little trouble hearing you. Sorry, can you hear me now? Uh, Might just need faintly. to move a little closer to your microphone. Yeah, can you hear me now? That's better. Okay, great. Um, did you read the comments that were posted? Yep, I read through the comments. We have uh, no concerns with the conditions or anything like that. Okay, oh. uh, there was one concerned citizen. Yep, so we had Ann uh, Warner registered to speak. So I uh, see her there if you want to make yourself known. So she had, uh, Ann had called in by phone. So I don't know, I see that you're not muted, but um, I believe star nine is what number do we push i'm sorry okay yep you're good now we can hear you oh i i'm speaking on behalf of my mother uh, ann warner she lives at 80 vine street uh, she's 93 years old and she was just not quite sure what the building is uh, all about so could you maybe just give her a little heads up please okay so could the agent just give a brief uh synopsis of this yeah i'm happy to so what's being proposed here is a six-story rental apartment building. Um, it's going to be located on the portion of the property that fronts onto Bay Street. And mm -hmm. then in the, in the rear of the building will be um, an outdoor amenity area for the residents and a very small parking area with six parking spaces that will front onto Cannon Street. Okay. And then the amenity will be for uh, socializing or barbecuing or things like that or what? Yeah, right now they're looking at having a small area for um, like community gardens and a small area for, for patio space, you know, like barbecues and seating, and then a little small grassed area for, for kids to play. Okay, well, is this similar to uh, the Good Shepherd up at Pearl and King? It, is it subsidized uh, living as well? It's This is uh, an application by City Housing Hamilton, so it's not, not Good Shepherd, but yes, it is affordable housing. So it is similar to what, what the Good Shepherd is doing, is that correct? 
Uh, I can't speak exactly to what they're doing, but I think it is a similar concept, yes. Okay, and these are <clears throat> people who are waiting to get a place where they can't quite afford it themselves? And you uh, help subsidize them, is that the idea? So it's a would be the building would be owned by City Housing Hamilton. I believe that they have a waiting list of of interested residents, um, and they have their own process for selecting the the residents of the building once it's completed. <clears throat> well, would this be uh, the tent people or those who are homeless? Uh, that's what her question was. Um, it would be. I'm not sure who's on the city housing waiting list. To be honest, I can't speak to that. I know it's a long list, and there's lots <clears throat> of people in the city who want affordable housing. Okay, but they will be paying the rent or the city will be paying the rent? I believe it's subsidized rent. So the people who live there still pay rent. It's just less than market value. Okay, that that's, uh, she just wanted to feel a little more comfortable because in the past we, she's had some tents across the road and some problems with, uh, as you can imagine, the, the situation right now in Hamilton. Yeah, okay, I understand. I think the, the proposal will be a, a significant improvement. The current site's just an empty parking lot. So it will definitely right. be much, much nicer than that and it'll be well managed as well. Okay, you that okay with it? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I, I just wanted to know. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, does the committee have any how do questions? I, how do I mute us again? <laughs> I'll, I'll mute you, it's okay. Move it. Second it. Bob, then, then uh, Mel. Mark. Yeah. All in favor? Oh, no. Any opposed? Seeing none. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Thank you very much. And we are all set for the next item. So we are hearing HMA 21305 for 179 Berry Street East in Hamilton. We have the owners registered to speak and no interested parties. Okay, is the owner available? Yes. And did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? I did, sir. And do you have any questions? No. Move it. Committee, have any questions? No, move it. Second. Nancy, Mark, all in favor? Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. And we are all set for the next item. We are hearing HMA 2240. For 115 and 111 Whitney Avenue in Hamilton, we have the agent registered to speak and the owner and no interested parties. Okay. Is the agent available? Uh, so I believe I can see the owner. Um, I just can't hear you. Yeah, can you hear okay. me now? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think the agent is uh, on a family emergency, so I can't speak to that. Okay. Did you or the agent have a chance to uh, read the comments that were posted? Yes, we did. And do you have any questions? Uh, no, uh, I'm okay. Okay, committee? Questions or a motion? I have Love a motion it. by Bob. Bob? Seconder? Nancy. Nancy? All in favor? Here, here. Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Okay, thank you. And we are all set for the next item. So we are hearing HMA 21310 for 65 McGill Street in Hamilton. We have the agent and owners registered to speak and no interested parties. Okay, is the agent available? Uh, yes, I am. Shane Van Barneveld. Good to see you, committee. Yep. Did, Hello. You have a chance, did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? I, I did, yep. And uh, uh, yeah, I just want to speak to you. I know the city staff, um, uh, were, all their comments were, uh, were positive except for uh, variance number three. 
Um, and I just want to know, I'm, just, I'm sure most of you went out and saw this, this property, but uh, uh, where we're proposing to build the deck up to the property line is, is up against where the neighbor has put an addition. So uh, it's a, it's, it's an eight foot brick wall. Um, so it's not, we're not, you know, looking into the neighbor's backyard or, or losing any privacy or anything. It would just be wasted space if we can't use it for, for a deck because it's kind of, it's useless for anything else. So um, so I, I still, I know what, I know what the city needs to do. I still feel like this is pretty minor and, uh, um, we'd like to, uh, we'd like to proceed with that one as well. Okay. Committee, you have any questions? I have Thomas. I, I couldn't tell from the drawings. How wide is the deck up the side the, uh, of the house? Uh, up the side, it's just a little over, just a hair over three feet. So it's uh, be some difficulty in making it a little bit narrower to make to come with the Bible. <laughs> yeah, it's that's the thing, right? Like it's just it's just space that you know becomes useless unless we you know build, continue the deck kind of down into that little little section, and then at least our clients can use it for you know some storage or or, or whatever. But you know, it's not a spot where they're putting <laughs> tables and chairs and hanging out, or it's just really to clean it up more than anything. Uh, yeah, I'm curious uh, if staff can sort of advise us what, what what's the problem other than the technical problem of not meeting the strict uh, wording of the bylaw. Uh, through the chair of the committee, as per the comments, um, our concerns were overlook and privacy and access to the fence or deck. Um, Yeah, and, and, and that's in a normal situation, you know, we're dealing with an addition on the lot line already built by the neighbors. So all of that is taken out of uh, consideration. Well, if, if there was a walkway up the side of the house, it, wouldn't there be the same privacy problem? Well, there, this is a triplex, so there's, there's no walkway in between the homes. Oh, I, I'm sorry, is it that close? No, yeah. but if the deck, if the deck wasn't there, then it'd be walkway, wouldn't it, or an open space? If the, yeah, if the deck wasn't there, it's it's just a you know a, a three and a half foot section between um, the pro, you know two buildings, and and you don't you can't walk all the way to the street, uh, so it's just like a little yeah little 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 indent okay. that we're just trying to make you know clean up and make it look nicer and, make, and have the deck just uh, just stretch down the side. And how high is the deck off the ground? Uh, the deck is fair. It's fairly low. I think it's uh, um, uh, how high is what? Oh, one foot eight inches uh, from grade. Oh, <laughs> almost a sidewalk. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I believe we have a question or comment from Nancy. Yep, yeah, please. Um, Shane, on the end of that, is there a little visual barrier or something that would satisfy the fact that it's well, not? I, like on the on the on the lot line, close to the neighbor, that side that uh, staff seems to think is a little bit um, or yeah, whatever so they it's, called it invasive. Y yeah, they've the neighbor has taken care of that for us. They have an addition that basically goes to the to the length of our deck. And there's an eight foot wall as part of that addition that is providing, you know, all of, so yeah. So we don't okay. need to put anything because there's already okay. a big eight foot wall there. That wall makes that barrier. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Okay. That's why we're, that's why, you know, we're looking at this as, as so minor because these uh, existing conditions are already, already there. Okay. I'm ready to move it. Move approval. I'm ready to second it. Yeah. Bef I'm ready to third it. <laughs> and I appreciate that, but I just want to make sure because um, uh, staff uh, did add a variance um, in the comment section, and I just want to make sure that that is um, recognized as, as as being put forth for approval as as well. I just don't. I just want to make sure that that one doesn't get forgotten about. Okay, hey, which what do you need to um, verify? Uh, it's the. On the staff comments under development engineering, it's um, 
The variance shall be modified to include the following additional variance based on a revised submission. So it's a covered but unenclosed front porch and stairs shall be permitted to project 2.9 meters into the front yard and be distant zero meter from the front lot line instead of the requirement for a closed porch to not project more than three meters into the front yard and be distant not less than 1.5. So basically what we're doing, it's an existing front porch um, and all we're doing is, is, uh, is repairing it. We're not making it any larger or any smaller than it is, uh, but it was something that uh, when we initially applied for, I guess it got missed and then staff caught it and, and added it as a comment. I just wanna make sure we're, we're good with that one as well. Um, sorry, I don't have that comment. I don't either. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. have that comment here either. Nobody either. does. Really? So where on the comments package was that? Uh, what's that? Building division. Yeah, it's, it? it's under the building division. I don't know why I have it, but you don't. So our um, development engineering comments are, is just about the existing drainage pattern. There's a note there that says see attached additional comments. I guess we didn't get those. <laughs> no, so that that's just our standard so that because there were additional comments, not from development engineering, but there were additional comments, uh, the sketches and stuff like that were included. Nothing else here. We can only okay. pass um, here. We'll have to, we'll have to figure out how to deal with that then. I don't know why we have those comments, but you don't. Yeah, just one minute and I'll take a look. So can we get planning to okay that as a variance or do we need to table it and have that added to it? No. We just say as amended by additional variance, if applicable. I'm happy with that. Yep. yep. Just, so. just hold on, I've almost got it. <laughs> okay. Um, we think that the wrong comments might have been attached. Joy. Um, so can someone from planning agree with what we wanna so, do here? Yeah, so I think the original comments that you were looking at, um, Jane, were from for a different file uh, because this one is for the the comments that we have for McGill mm -hmm. and that were posted are from uh, that a street townhouse district regulations. It doesn't note any additional variances. So I think the ones that you were looking at were for 47 twos. I think of, there might've been an original oh. confusion with stuff being posted. Let me just see if I can Building find those comments to see if what you're referring to makes was something sense. in the first application that had multiple comments. And I know twos was one of them. I didn't look down to see that McGill was on the same sheet. So I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, you're so, I have the wrong comments or? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So there was an original um, one that said, the variances shall be modified to include the following additional variants based on a revised submission, a covered but unenclosed front porch and yep. stairs shall be permitted. Is that the one that you're referring to? That's correct. Okay. Well, well that's a separate issue, is it? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, you're talking about the on page five of, of six of the comments, right? Under building division? Yep. Where it says an additional variance identified through this review has been included. Nope. Okay. Nope. Yeah. So so we do have that additional variance. Okay. Um, it looks like <laughs> we've got two versions of the building comments and it wasn't noted correctly, which was the revised version. So yeah, so I do have a, an additional variance request for a covered but unenclosed front porch and stairs shall be permitted to project 2.9 meters into the required front yard and be distant zero meters from the front lot line instead of the requirement for an unenclosed porch to not project more than three meters into the front yard and be distant not less than 1.5 meters from the front lot line. Correct. 
Motion as amended. Hold on, are you okay with that, Shane? That's that's what we're looking for. Yeah, like I said, okay. we just we just want to repair the existing front porch and have it part of this. So, if that's the case, okay, then Mark. who who made the motion? Yeah, I made the motion, Mark, and I, I'm happy to be amended that way. Thank you. Okay. Everybody made the motion. <laughs> Okay, right. so, so Mark, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Who, who are you recognizing for making the motion in the seconding? Because <laughs> oh, <okay. Sorry. laughs> I think everybody made the same motion all at the same time, and then the other people, whoever didn't make okay. the motion, seconded. We, so. we had a big movement. Yeah. I'm going to pick Mark, and I'm going to put Thomas as seconding it. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Everyone okay with that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All in all favor? favor? Opposed, if any? <laughs> Seeing none. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have a good afternoon, committee. Thank you. So we are all set for the next one. So we are hearing HMA 21318 for 79 Kipling Road in Hamilton. We have the owner um, registered to speak and no interested parties. Okay. Is the owner available? Yes, I am. Yes. Did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Uh, yes, I did. Did you have any questions? No, I don't. Committee, questions or a motion? Move it. Mel, then uh, Nancy? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Here, here. Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And we're all set for the next item. So we're hearing HMB 2161 for 128 Canada Street in Hamilton. And we have the agent registered to speak and no interested parties. Okay, is the agent available? I am Mr. Chairman, Steve Fraser, AJ Clark and Associates. Yes, did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? I did, uh, certainly support staff's recommendation. Um, just a couple housekeeping items more than anything. Uh, there's still reference to a semi-detached dwelling in some of staff's comments. And just for clarity, uh, we're, we're doing a single detached, uh, two single detached dwellings with easements for access and maintenance. Um, so just wanted to clarify that for the committee. And then the building division has appropriately identified that a demolition permit and a minor variance application are required. However, they're not included as conditions. So I'd request that the decision, uh, if approved, be amended to add those two conditions. And I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Committee? Move it with the uh, recommended changes. Okay, Bob, seconder. And Thomas? All in favor? Here, here. Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Thanks, sir. And we are all set for the next one. So, um, oh, actually, sorry. So this one was uh, tabled. So FLA 21321 uh, for 47 twos lane was withdrawn by the applicant. Um, I believe it was Steve Frazier's file. I don't know if you wanted to say anything more, but we do have it noted that it has been formally withdrawn. Okay, so it was withdrawn. So we don't need to keep any of the paperwork. 
That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to bother you yesterday, uh, Jamila, but. Yeah, no problem. We hadn't gotten uh, Steve's email yet saying that it was withdrawn yeah. when I sent, when I responded to you. Thanks for getting back. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> We're ahead right, so now we just... by a minute. Oh Ready? my. Oh yes. <laughs> All right, we're all set for the next one. So we are hearing DNB 2171 for 321 Hat Street in Dundas. Uh, we have the agent, uh, an applicant and owner registered to speak and no interested parties. Okay, is the uh, agent available? Uh, yes, I am. Do you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Uh, yes, I have, yeah. And do you have any questions? No, no questions. Committee, any questions? No, move it. Nancy? Got it. And Laverne? All in favor? Here, here. Opposed, if any? None. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Thank you. A lot of pages. <laughs>
right. We are all set for the next item. So we are hearing DNA 21300 for 26 Dunning Court in Dundas. We have the owners registered to speak and no interested parties. Okay, is the owner available? Yes, we're both here. Did you, did hear you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Uh, yes, we did. And do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? The mic's off. Uh, Laverne moved it. Second. Bob seconded. All in favor? Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion carried. Application approved. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Peter. <laughs> We are all set for the next item. 
So we are hearing FLA 21322, 441 Flanders Drive in Flamborough. We have the agent and owners registered to speak and no interested parties. Is the agent available? Yes, I am. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Shane Wilson from Details Matter. Yes, did you, did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Yes, I have, and I uh, shared them with the clients as well. Okay, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Do you have Move any it. questions? Move it. Nancy? <laughs> Melvin? Nancy, the All in favor? Here, here. Moving along. Opposed, awesome. if any? Seeing none? Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. I'm so happy they're keeping the wine room. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a shame. Take care. All right. Um, Do we have so a little, our, little break? Yes. So our next file is not until 2.40. So we will have um, a recess until 2.40. <laughs> All right. Hmm.
bureau as well now, is it? No, no, it's it's like the okay. lands and forests and God knows what mining, okay. something to do with mining. Must have been fairly recent then, Jamila. Yeah, it was just, um, uh, I believe in July they announced it. So it's oh, that long ago. Trickling down. So, huh. yeah. Say it again, Ontario Land Tribunal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So, um, Committee of Adjustment and Appeals, the process hasn't changed. The forms and some of that kind of stuff look different now. Of course. Let's just amend everything and send out a thousand different new forms. Ah, okay. <laughs> Well, they cut some words out of the title, so that helps. <laughs> a little bit to make it more school. gender neutral. That's right. Well, maybe. <laughs> Consumer friendly. Maybe. Yeah, I think there was some confusion with the local aspect of it. Now they're going to have to put OMB, formerly LPAT, or formerly OMB, formerly LPAT, now known as OLT. Yep. Because if you had an application in a previous name and you wanted to refer to it, you'd have to put them all, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Jamila? Yep. So we are all set for HMA 21312 for 288 Acadia Drive in Hamilton. We have the uh, agent and owner registered to speak and no interested parties. Is the agent available? I don't believe so. Uh, so I believe the owner is here though. Okay. Did you uh, have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Yes, I have no comments to your comments. <laughs> Do you have any questions? No, no, no. I move it. Okay, Nancy, seconder. Margaret. I'll second. Hey, <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Here. Opposed to Penny? <laughs> Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion carried, application approved. Okay. And just to clarify, that is approved as amended for building? Yes. Thank you. Did you? Nope. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a very, very small, small minor variant. Oh, you must have <laughs> hit something that went right out. I didn't hit anything. Go back in. Back in normally. Did email? Oh, I can still see that Laverne is connected. It just says he's got a low connection somehow. Well, oh, everybody's spinning now. <laughs> Everybody looks fine to me. Yeah, I know. I think it depends on our own systems. I had Bob was okay. You were okay. But those guys in the middle, man, they were a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Laverne signed out and signed back in. Can you see Laverne? I can now. He's I can see him. Here twice oh double your pleasure double your fun let's get laverne <laughs> in twice <laughs> maybe in conference with mel yeah they're working on it here Oh, 
It's going to be there. To... <laughs> Another hundred dollar fee. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Switzer, the technical wizard. <laughs> I knew what I was doing to be better. <laughs> no significance to the fact that he's all by himself down in the corner. <laughs> We are all set for the next one. So we are hearing HMA 21315 for 64 Meadow Lark Drive in Hamilton. We have the agent and owner registered to speak and no interested parties. Okay, is the agent available? Yep, that's me. Okay, did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Uh, yes, I did. Do you have any questions? Uh, nope. I do. I have a question. Yep. Just regarding this old building permit from 2016, as this gets approved, is it possible that that can get uh, inspected and finalized? Uh, I believe so. Uh, during the build, we can have a look at it. But what the homeowner wants to do is just fully renovate the basement. Okay. I guess you still have to deal with that permit and close it off or do something, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Is that a motion, Nancy? Sure. Okay. Second. Mel seconded. All in favor? Here, here. Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none, motion carried. Application approved. All right, thank you, committee. <laughs> These SCUs are coming fast and furious, aren't they? <laughs> I think people were holding off, waiting for the new regulations. Uh -huh. Well, we're not That's getting really people objecting to any of this stuff anymore either, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, I sat through most of the planning meeting on Tuesday. Well, I started yawning. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on about them. It's stuff to figure out, I guess. Yeah. So if you have a see it or a what are those little cars called? Smart yeah, Smart. then you're all good for the next one. <laughs> Just a little shorter driveway.
air conditioning. Air conditioning. That urban expansion, you know, they sent out all those questionnaires and the uh, update was supposed to come back to council sometime in September. Has that come back yet? No, coming, I think. Huge response. Yeah. More than they expected, I guess. Mm -hmm. To a negative tune, I think, right? I can't answer that in public. <laughs> We're all set for the next item. We are hearing HMA, <clears throat> sorry, 21314 for 155 Howard Avenue in Hamilton. We have the agent registered to speak and no interested parties. Is the agent available? Yes. Did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Yes, I have. Do you have any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Committee, questions, motion? Okay. Second. Nancy, Bob, all in favor? Opposed, if any? None. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Okay, thank you, committee. These are all very yeah, these are all right outside my door here. <laughs> all in the same neighborhood. Which one's the next ones? All the last three. <laughs> oh. All last three. I haven't got to the next one yet. I say if you're right out next door for the next one, you're down Winona. Oh yeah, the next one's Winona Road, no. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. can you see Winona from there? <laughs> <laughs> not, not even on a big ladder. <clears throat> She's daydreaming, though. <laughs> well, this is... I think the wrong, am I crazy, but is this not the wrong GIF map? No, or maybe not. Yeah. Yes. Is it the right one? Actually, yes, the, the Winona one is, but the following one um, includes the Winona property. Okay. Mostly basically the same property. Yep, you're right. 395, 350 in service road, okay. Costco Plaza. 
basically trying to handle Oh, I see the words OLT now. I see them. The letters, rather. Invariance one. Hmm. OLT, there we go. Yes, yeah. Twenty two hundred and forty two parking spaces. Picture it. It sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder how many parking spaces there are at Language Mall. Probably a lot, eh? There is a lot, probably just as many, if not more. And yet at Christmas time there's never enough. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Not last Christmas, that's for sure. Oh, no. Or even today. I mean, it's still not busy there. People have learned to do a lot of online shopping. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for the committee members, did you want to hear the next two items together? Um, they're kind of sister applications, but they were put on uh, separate times. So I'm not sure if you wanted to wait and hear them both at 3.15 or hear them both now or the one now and then the other one at 3.15. I think there's different variances on them. Yeah. So if we'll it's hear, okay, separately, well, Let's hear the one at, now at 3.10 and then we'll do the other one at 3.15. Okay. Just in case. Yeah. All right. So we are hearing SCA 21307 for 400 Winona Road and Stony Creek. We have the agent registered to speak and the owner and no interested parties. Uh, we did have Councillor Pearson who just requested um, for me to let the committee members know that she was in support of the application. Okay. Is the uh, agent available for this application? Uh, yes, Jerry Chesler here with MHBC Planning. Yes, did you have a chance to read uh, the comments that were posted? Yep, we did, and we have uh, no issues with the staff report. Okay. Um, and the counselor is not available, right? She just sent her comments? Okay. Uh, committee, have any questions or a motion? Move it. I got it. Laverne and Mel. All in favor? Here, here. Opposed, if any? None. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Great, thank you. Sorry, but now you have to wait three and a half minutes. <laughs> That's okay. The, the variances are the same though for both applications. I, th I thought there might have been one little thing I saw different, but. If we were behind in time, I probably would have pushed the two together. But... We've got time. We do. <laughs> time is. Time is on our side. This is the first time in how many meetings? <laughs> <laughs> We've caught up by the end for a couple of the, the last ones. Yeah. Been, we're trying to restrict yeah, how many items we're doing in a, a, a meeting. So it's I think that's been helping. The chairman have been doing a remarkable job. <laughs> Thank you. The chairman. Yeah. That's more than one. Well, Mark did okay last meeting. <laughs> Don't respond, Mark. He's, I'm he's not. joshing you. I'm happy with Dale. Yeah. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Today. No I mean Today. It. Today, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody looked outside lately? Is it still doing anything like raining? 
not downtown. It's uh, it's overcast today, Caster. I think this rain has just been coming in the nighttime, and it's long gone by the time I pop out of bed. <laughs> You'll have to get up earlier. <laughs> I was up at five this morning, Mr. Farmer. I was. Oh, geez. you need a second job then? <laughs> I have a second job then. Oh. I, have a, I have a third job. What are you going to do with all your money? <laughs> They're called volunteer jobs, my friend. Oh. There's been no theaters, so I've been trying to find things to fill those extra hours. But looks like theaters coming back, so excited. Is it really? I did go to, yeah, oh yeah, we're starting um, in November, I think. I've got two shows to do. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm. Yep. I saw, a I saw a show at Stratford um, in August. That was I was there. Yeah, I, was, oh, I saw Inside Show about two weeks ago in Stratford. What did you say, R and J? No, I saw uh, the Red Sisters. Oh, okay. We saw Three Tall Women. Amazing. Yeah. Hmm. Amazing. Right. Red Sisters and Three okay. Tall Women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to see that, but it was sold out because it was even. Um, there were fewer seats available at the time because it had to be outside under the tent. Yeah. So, yeah, couldn't get to see that one. Okay, we are all set for the next file. So we are hearing SCA 21306 for 39550 Road and 1360 South Service Road in Stony Creek. We have the agent and owner registered to speak and no interested parties. And again, the uh, counselor did send in comments of support. Or move it. <laughs> Second. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jerry had to sit and wait. Mark and Nancy, all in favor? <laughs> Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion carried, application approved. Thanks for waiting. Thanks very much, Thanks everyone. everybody. Have a great day. Take care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> David cut his mic off. No. David, Laverne has a question. Did you play football for the BC Lions? Pardon? Did you play football for the BC Lions? Can somebody turn up his volume? He, uh, oh, Laverne, your microphone's off. He said, did you play football for the BC Lions? I think that's what- Did you, did you play football for the BC Lions? No, I did not. Well, I know a guy that says you did, so he's wrong then. <laughs> he is wrong. <laughs> wow. Maybe you should use that in your profile, Dave. Yeah, then. Did you play football for anybody? Yeah, yeah I played for... Uh, well, I went to Nova Scotia, played out at X, and then I went to the Toronto and Saskatchewan camps. But then I blew out my shoulder, and then I had to uh, reveal everything, and then after that, it was, I went downhill. <laughs> then I came to the Committee of Adjustments right after that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted to uh, have any damaged goods on their team, eh? <laughs> no. <laughs> you didn't ask for the, like, you know, X-ray, so I thought, oh, I'm in for sure now. 
<laughs> Do you know Glenn Murray? Yeah, I know Glenn Murray. There's, there's my information line. Ah. Yeah, I know Glenn Murray well. Yes. Obviously, he doesn't know you well enough, Dave. <laughs> probably, was drinking, probably was drinking and misunderstood, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, or you lied. Hydronics. He owns Hamilton Hydronics. I know. I uh, know Ian and, and Bruce, his two sons, really well, and Glenn really well, and his Heather, his daughter. I know the whole family really well, actually. So they're good people. Glenn likes to drive those farm. fancy cars. He bought the farm that I was raised on. Oh, he did? Yeah. It's good. Yeah. That's a while ago, though. Mm -hmm. Hey, I can top one. Spencer McKay, did you play basketball in Belgium? I did not play in Belgium. I just Googled your name and it says Belgian former basketball player. No, I played for McNabb <laughs> High School, but that's about it. <laughs> All right, we're all set for the next item. We are hearing SCA 21309 for 40 Zinfandel Drive in Stony Creek. We have the agent registered to speak and no interested parties. And again, we did have uh, just a note uh, from the counselor that she was in support of the application. Okay, uh, the agent is available. Did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? I did and uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, no comments at this time. We're in full support of the uh, staff report. Okay. Beautiful. Committee. Move it. Second. All Nancy, Laverne. Terry. All in favor? You're here. Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion carried. Application approved. I have a question, though, that's not going to affect the decision. It's showing Agent Urban Core. Is that like, are you running two? I don't even know that. Are you guys running two company names there? There is a planning firm and a development firm. So they're different. Okay. Okay. I just wondered if it was meant to be the other ones and it was a mistake. Okay. Thank you guys. Think of urban core, I always think of Hamilton urban core, which is something totally different. Can we talk about other than the last four applications? David, do you drive back and forth to the East Coast or do you fly once in a while? I fly all the time out of Mount Hope. Uh, it's like five hours from my front door, plane security and the uh, front door in Nova Scotia. But this time I'm going to drive and I'm dreading the thought. I mean, I got 20 hours of, you know, by myself in my truck. I don't really want to do it, but. Won't we go like, with you? Sure. <laughs> I keep you entertained, I bet. <laughs> singing, singing and yakking your ear off right i get it no problem <laughs> you have to find a good podcast to listen to that's what yeah. i have i've got long drives no yeah. no what's uh what is the airfare done in prices like i know you know quite a bit earlier in the year they're really cheap but now they're getting up there well yeah you're gonna pay about three four hundred bucks one way right now uh 
But if you book about a month in advance, you're still at about 140, 150 bucks. Mm. And you also Monday. got the option of flying out of Kitchener Waterloo, Flair Airlines, which is super cheap yeah. too. Yeah. So that's another one to uh, Halifax. So same thing. There, if you book a good month or so in advance, you'll you'll get the cheap airline. It's just that the later you go, the more expensive. Like if I book tomorrow for Nova Scotia, I'll probably pay about four eighty five hundred for one way. It is what it is, right? That's what airline is flying out of Mount Hope? Swoop. It's only an hour and forty five minutes. It's really right. fast. Are they a separate airline yeah. or are they a subsidiary of somebody else? West Jet, what West Jet, you know, low low airline. Budget. Uh -huh. No no perks. You bring your own lunch and your own drinks, right? Oh, no, no. <laughs> they got rock and beer on board and wine, so I'm good. No, they <laughs> serve you. How long is the drive from Halifax? What's that? How long is the drive from Halifax to your place? Well, my house in Antigonish about an hour and a half, and my place in Sydney about oh, three and a half. I was thinking of Cape Breton. Yeah, yeah three, three, and half. three and a half uh -huh. from Halifax Airport. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a nice drive though. It's okay. I don't mind that. No. Antigonish is just down the way, right? Oh, it's, right. It's a it's, good. It's a good in between stop. It's nice in the fall up that way. Beautiful. Oh my God, it's the best. That's why I don't mind driving this time. It's just just incredible fall. But the problem is, when I get there, I got to rent a car. And when you rent a car now with this stupid chip thing going on in Asia, uh, nobody has cars. None of the car lots have them. The car um, rentals don't. And if they do, they're charging quadruple. And they're raping you for for everything out there for cars. And I think that's just standard across the board. So um, it's impossible and expensive to rent a vehicle. So that's the reason why I have to drive probably this mm. time around. Do you know when I had my accident in April, I rented a car and it was for like, what, I think it was three weeks or something. It was only like 300 or 400, I have some stupid amount of money. And then I went to rent one in just a few weeks ago. They wanted like 160 a day. Right. A day. That's exactly I went for three, four hundred bucks a week to uh, twelve hundred dollars a week. Wow! It's triple. That's crazy. Just because they can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're all set for the next item. So we are hearing A N A twenty one two one five for one zero one Pine Street in Ancaster. We have the agent and owners registered to speak, and no interested parties. Is the agent available? Uh, so you just, yeah. Hello. Yes. For me, it's Peter Tree, uh, agent. Did for you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Yes, I did, yes. And do you have any questions? Um, no, no, I was, it seems very straightforward. And we, we tabled the application earlier in the summer. So um, it seems like we've, you know, some of the concerns have been resolved. So, okay. Yeah. Committee have any questions? Laverne, Laverne seconder. Roll second. Anybody? I do. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed, if any? Here, here. Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion carried. Application approved. Thank you, sir. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Dave, why don't you buy an inexpensive car down there? It'll be cheaper. I'll leave it there. Yeah. I know. That's, I know. You're right. I'm, I'm looking at, but the problem is that the par cars are more expensive now than ever. They're an extra 10, 20,000 bucks because of this chip thing. Once again, a car lot that would have 400 cars on it. Now I've got 50 or 60 cars I, just driving to the city. Okay, well, buy a cheap one here, drive it down, then fly back. And the next time you fly, it's there. You can still get them cheap here. No, they're still expensive. I don't know. There's nothing no, on the lots, lot, apparently. There's nothing on the lots. I mean, I, you know what? I got to drive a decent car and I got to get one that gets me there. And I got to just, I got to. Yeah, that's true. Proof. I need something yeah. loose proof. Air proof. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> well, you got that Hummer, man. That'll do it. I know. I just got it redone. Yeah. Somebody told me. Oh, you're right. Somebody bought the new Hummer. 
You got the moose horns on the front hood. Yeah, I put I put my name in for the new Hummer too, 2023 electric. Yeah, that's what my guy just ordered. I ordered one. Yeah. I'm on sixth on the waiting list in Nova Scotia, though. Jesus. He's he ordered his in the spring, I think he said. And uh, yeah. he's from Hun he's from Huntsville, so I don't know how that worked. But yeah, I said, "Are you kidding me?" And I guess it's outstanding vehicle. Standing electric, thousand horsepower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thousand horsepower. Sure, I'll have to stop every hundred kilometers and plug it in, though. <laughs> Long extension cord. Yeah. <laughs> Hope the batteries don't short out and you have a hot seat. <laughs> yeah. Dave, don't forget to take Highway 30 off the 401 and bypass Montreal. I know. It saves so much time. It's oh, great. It's unbelievable. $4 will cost you to do the bypass, and away you go. Right. You don't have to read any signs. That's the best thing about it. It's the signs start reading it. That's what gets you in trouble in Montreal. <laughs> don't come from the front Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Well, I just know a few words that I just don't really want to bring them up right now. <laughs> <laughs> We are all set for the next item. So we are hearing ANA 21302 for 95 Tollgate Drive in Ancaster. We have the owner registered to speak and no interested parties. Is the owner available? Uh, yes, I'm the owner, John Michaels. Yes, did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I, I only have two issues that I wanted to just bring up. I think they're minor. Um, it, it stated on my application that it was for an on-ground pool, and in the application it put down to permit the construction of an in-ground pool. Um, I wish I could afford it, but I, I'd rather, I'm going to just put an on-ground pool um, there. And um, the second issue was one of the uh, building permit requirements was that because it's a bit of a bastard lot, um, that the uh, construction of the pool, etc., would overstate the 35% um, necessary of the house of the uh, lot coverage and that that wasn't in the uh, I put it in the application but I um, didn't make it into the um, summary that I received that um, so I, I wouldn't know what size of um, you know housing structure to put the pool supplies in etc so I wanted to just um, know if I could have an extension over the 35% of the uh, full site plan. I'm wondering if in that situation, if we should table it until you have an actual size of the um, accessory structure, I guess it would be classified. Because yeah, the, of... the size would would actually, like if, if you said it can't go over 35, well then I, I'm limited to like 21 square feet. But if, it, if you said it can go over, then I'll, I'll make it to the size. I'm, I'm limited in the summary that it sent. It did say that if an accessory building is built, it can't be more than, um, I forget how many square meters, um, which I would abide by, of course. Um, so that was in there. I didn't know if that was instead of saying, you know, 38% or 40% or something like that. Do you have a number? No, I, I would probably, I'd probably build a 10 by 10. So is 10 by 10 allowed without having to have a minor variance? Um, well, they're, they're not saying that. I, they, yeah, they, I didn't know that my structures, or not my structure, but my house, because the lot is a bit irregular, um, that it would be over, that I, I didn't know there was a requirement of 35%. It just stated um, the lot coverage appears to be over the maximum permitted, 35%. Um, and I provided the full site plan of the lot area house coverings. Um, if it's over 35%, please provide a successful application uh, to the Committee of Adjustments, which I did. It just wasn't in the summary um, of the papers that I received, but it may have been hidden in the, this is the size of the building that you're allowed. So in the uh, minor variance notice, one of the notes was that the maximum ground floor area for any accessory building shall be 
uh, a maximum of 40 meters squared. So that's for all of them. If therefore, if the proposed ground floor area exceeds the maximum permitted further variances shall be required. Oh, it, it wouldn't exceed that, no, not at all. Then, then you're you okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. I have no Good comment. Have, all the other comments were fine. Okay, uh, Laverne. Do you need a permit to put up a pool above ground? It's not above there. So I'm learning this myself. The above ground sits on top of your lawn. Um, That's you know, correct. Kitty, kitty pool and an in ground is completely submerged. And an on ground is partially in the ground and partially out of the ground. So this would be about a four and a half foot deep pool with two and a half feet in the ground, or two feet in the ground, or two and a half feet in, and two feet above the ground. But it's my understanding that if you, if you have a pool, you said it was above ground. No, if on ground. If you have ground. a pool that sits on the, on the grass or on sand on the grass, you do not need a permit. Right, and this one would be- and I got that from a building inspector. Right, this would be, what, what I'm proposing is an on ground. There's three types. Which is part so, and part. Right, it'd be partially in the ground, partially out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Okay, committee have any other questions on this one? Move it. Melvin, seconder? Here. Bob, all in favor? Here, here. Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none, motion carried, application approved. Thank you very and, much for your time. Uh, just to clarify, that was as amended per building. Yep. And it will say on ground on the permit, not uh, in ground? Yeah. Yeah. That better be noted. Yeah, we note that. Unless someone's going to contribute to, to the extra purchase. <laughs> the <price>. other $60,000. <laughs> I'm, personally, I'm not opposed to that, so. <laughs> Thank you again. Welcome. Oh, that's my phone, sorry. You must have thought toll gate was gonna be longer than necessary. There's 10 minutes between it and the next one. Yes, again, there was another item that was removed before it made it okay. onto the final version. How do you think these car manufacturers, you know, I mean, when they don't have enough chips for these cars or whatever to be able to put them on the lots to be sold. So there's a backlog in the processing, uh, like at the Ford plant and whatever, but um, you think they'll make less vehicles in 2022 to try and get rid of the surplus of 2021? Yeah, probably because they're behind. They've got the new, but they got to fill the orders in that they probably had people. They're probably going back and said, you still want your 2021 car? We got 2022 now, you know. I don't like, know how it would do that. I know a couple people that have been looking at buying a, a pickup truck and they want to buy a, a, a 2022. And normally you would order it in October and the well Dodge or Chrysler dealership they're not taking any orders until April of 22 for a I know. 22 truck <laughs> I know they're about six oh. months behind and that's what they said with the new Hummer it's 2023 but they say you won't get it till 2024 <laughs> Well, at least we're still getting pizza on time, eh, Dave? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no delays there. Well, then I won't be ordering any Hummers because we don't even know if we'll be around to drive them. 
<laughs> or you could order one and not have to pay for it, maybe. <laughs> oh yeah, there's I'm probably a clause. It anyway, Bob. <laughs> there's probably a clause in there, like there is in the house, that all heirs and signs and trustees will oh. hereby take possession and pay for the vehicle, <laughs> <That's> right? right? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you'd have bragging rights for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it would be, and I wouldn't remember about him. <laughs> I think they sent me a picture. They sent me a picture of your truck, and you can carry it around and show people. This is my truck. <laughs> it's a wonder, Dave, they don't ask. Well, you're okay, but I mean, for Mal or Laverne, they'd have to ask for a life insurance policy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even buy one now. How do, you, how do you know that Laverne's not the same age as me? <laughs> What's that? We, we've known each other just about that long. My goodness. I'm a little bit older. <laughs> and who's wiser? I am. <laughs> well, the jury's still out on that one. But anyway. I can't remember. Can't remember what he forgot. <laughs> Twenty seconds to go. <laughs> we are all okay, set so for the next item. Okay. So, so we are hearing HM or sorry, ANA twenty one three one nine for eleven door court. In Ancaster, we have the owners registered to speak and no interested parties. Is the owner available? I am. My name is Natalie Murphy. Yes. Did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Uh, I did. And do you have any questions? No. Move it. Second. Second. Okay. Mal and Laverne, age not a factor. <laughs> All in favor? You're here. Opposed of any? Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion carried. Application approved. Thank you very much. Bob, are you at the cottage? Yes. Did you get lots of rain last couple of days or? Uh, yes, we have been. Right now it's just overcast, but uh, we've got a fair amount of rain and the water's come up a lot. Are they back up to normal levels or? Pretty well here right now they are. They, now it's supposed to rain tonight and it may go higher yet. You had to raise your cottage, didn't you, or something? Yes. Yes. When you get insurance on your cottage, do they ask questions like that? Like river levels and how close you are to water? And no. Most cottages nowadays, you can't get flood insurance. I think cooperators is the only company that will give flood insurance and I don't know how good the value would be. You're going to get an well, argument premium, over. Yeah, yeah, or the premium would be so high. Exactly. That, yeah. yeah. Biggest problem with that, Bob, the uh, uh, reinsurance company, which is Lloyd's of London's, will not accept them. Yeah. Well, 
Well, we can't complain. All this year, it's been exceptionally low. So I've been able to swim in deep water where normally I have to walk out a couple hundred feet just to get it up to my knees. Oh. All right, we are all set for the last one. We are hearing HMA 21311 for 170 West 35th, ah, sorry, West 35th Street in Hamilton. And we have the owners registered and no interested party. Is the owner available? Yes, I'm here. Oh, sorry, Dale, you're just muted. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, did you have a chance to read the comments that were posted? Yes, I did. And do you have any questions? Uh, nope. Committee, any questions, comments, motion? Move it. Move it. I'll take Bob and then Mel. All in favor? Here, here. Opposed, if any? Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion carried, application approved. Okay, thank you. That's a wrap. <laughs> that's it that's um all. so is uh, any business any questions i know laverne had a question about one of the applications today just some comments maybe someone could uh, help him out with uh Turn your phone his question laverne. uh so are we um Dale, I think at the last meeting, Nancy had asked if in the future we could um, adjourn the official meeting and go to yep. a business meeting okay. if there is items yep. that were sensitive. So I'm not sure. I had just asked um, if it was a sensitive issue that we could, uh, they, yep. the committee members would let me know so that I knew if we were just going to finish up okay. the meeting and just keep going or if we wanted to. Uh, no, we should, meeting or uh, Nancy's right. We should adjourn the meeting um, because any business part of it is is uh, after applications of today, so. Right. Okay. So uh, do we need a motion? Like from now on, should we have yeah. a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yeah, Absolutely. so if we want to adjourn okay. the meeting and open a business meeting, we would need motions okay. for that, yeah. <laughs> so Move it. I wanna make, I wanna make <laughs> a motion to adjourn the meeting. Nancy did. Nancy did? I okay. just did. We don't need a seconder and none all in favor. No, you have to. You got no choice. <laughs> hey, what choice is there? No, I want to keep talking. <laughs> Some people do. Okay. <laughs> now now That's we're good. in camera, so to speak, right? Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay.